좀 변형 같아 보일 수도 있는데 제가 가동 범위도 좀 짧고 전진 투병형 사신을 두판 하셨는데 좀 막기가 힘들었어요 솔직히 한번 명령을 내리면 또 계속 바꿔줘야 되는데 그게 좀 힘들더라고요 뭐라고 해야 되지? 신이 약간 저를 버린 것처럼 진짜 운명이었던 것 같아요 뭐 나쁘진 않은데 그래도 아쉬움이 많이 남죠 I think my PVP is not very good right now. So at least during that event, it wasn't very good. Uh, I don't really have a clear sense of what I'm trying to accomplish in the macro game and what the best builds are. So yeah, I think my uh, classic was obviously very good, and my PVP was just not very strong at that moment. 테란이 잘하면 진짜 좋아요. 근데 저는 잘하지 않거든요. 그러니까 그냥 딱이 정도 한다. 우승을 못해서 아쉬운 건 어쩔 수 없는 것 같고 제가 좀 태태전할 편한 스타일인 것 같아요. 저는 성주 후반 운영을 좀 따라하면서 했는데. 성주가 좀더 완벽하게 하니까 역부족이었던 것 같아요. 그때 제가 연습을 좀쉴 때라서 내가 못해서 진 거라 딱히 뭐할 말이 없네. Parents are definitely doing well. Uh, they seem to be struggling the most, at least in Korea. They're still doing well outside of Korea. Because uh, Seryl just won the recent championship and tossed it somewhere in between. But yeah, yeah. It seems like Terran is really, really doing well. 맵풀이 여전히 같은 맵을 쓰잖아요. 그래서 테란이 여전히 강할 것 같아요. 새로울 것 같진 않아요. 왜냐면 태저전을 많이 봤는데 저그들이 또 이제 좀 점점 갈수록 잘 있잖아요. 토스들도 이제 반감하게 대처를 잘 하더라고요. 그래서 조금은 달라질 수도 있을 것 같아요. 어 근데 이번에 저그 라인업 굉장히 지금 훌륭해서 잘하면 삼저그 8강 갈수 있을 것 같아요. 다른 종족 애들이 좀 못해줘야 되는데 그래도 지금 명단을 보니까 사태라는 만들기에는 준호도 있고 뭐 영우도 있고 테란전을 잘하는 애들이 워낙 많아서 좀 짱짱하지 않나 그래도 사실 제 바램이에요 사태를 안 나왔으면 좋겠어요 일단 원래 토스전은 옛날부터 자신 있어가지고 나머지 상대들도 빡세다고 생각한 선수들 아니어가지고 할 만한 것 같아요 저한테는 다 비슷하다고 느껴서 민수가 공중적이 많이 돌고 있지 않을까 저를 만나게 돼서 그냥 뭐 제가 연습을 하면 충분히 다 이길 수 있을 것 같아요 I don't know how his condition is now because he was in a, his arm uh, in a cast you know So uh, he, uh, I don't know uh, if he's been practicing a lot or not, but normally he's a very tough opponent for me. The other opponents, Ryung, I beat him in the qualifiers. So that was good for me. I think I, I have a good chance with him. Uh, Solar, Solar, Solar is also very tough. He's a very strong Zerg. The first season, I was a little bit of a win, but I'll be able to win this season. I've been playing for a long time, and I've been playing for a long time. I've been playing for a long time. 한번더 각오를 다지고 이런 거에 대해서 좀 저도 지쳐가지고 <웃음> 지금처럼 그냥 뭐 편하게 하면 결과는 뭐 따라오는 거라고 생각하기 때문에 이번 시즌은 좀큰 대회가 이제 앞으로 사우디 대회가 있어가지고 다 연습을 더도 그렇고 다 많이 할, 하는 딱 시즌이라서 그래도 네, 높이 올라갈 수도 있지 않을까? 네. Oh my first goal is just to win a match like I said. I would like to break my own six streak. <웃음> so be a good season to do it. Uh, yeah, and I'm just happy that uh, GSL is back offline. We can play offline and uh, happy to win a match and then really happy if I could get to the round of eight. Yeah. Round of 16, Group D. Cure. Australian. Young. Soul. Africa TV. Freak Up Studio. Live. 2023. GSL Season 2. I just noticed something really funny. I don't know how funny it'll be when I tell everybody. Maybe if you're watching the VOD after a while, but if you notice in the intro video with all the players, you, there's a shot of Cure, is, you know, his photo when he comes up. It's him pointing to his arm, like his broken arm. Like, how am I going to win GSL with one of these? <laughs> I didn't even notice yeah, that when yeah, watching yeah. the well, video. Wait for the next intro. You'll see it. It's funny. Um, look, I think this is going to be probably the best best of three of the evening. Um, Cure looks very strong. Solar, obviously, that was not a difficult match that he had versus Ryung. I am looking forward to this one. Yeah, Solar looked very good against Ryung right there in the first match. And Cure as well, you know, his TVP always on point. The fact that he was able to come back from losing his natural expansion to Estrella and still win 2-0 that series. It's a testament to how good this guy's decision making is. I mean, he knows how to weasel his way out of even the worst situations. So no cure, definitely the favorite coming into this group to advance, but both of, the, both of these guys would have a good shot should they make it to the round of eight. Here's the thing, though. Do we need another Terran in the round of eight? No. <laughs> <laughs> we really don't.
Club NV. Cure. Onside Gaming. Solar. Okay, let's get into this one. Um, you know, this is a this is gonna be fun. If Solar, let's say he doesn't win here and he's knocked out, right? That leaves just Dark in the GSL. Now, you know what makes Star Leagues different than your kind of marathon tournaments is that, oh, excuse me, so much more planning can be involved, right? Um, that means you know you only have to have one or two builds you bring out versus Zerg to beat him, right? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the Terrans probably watching this, fingers crossed, that Kira can basically off Solar so that everybody can bring their very best of the best. And it, uh, straight out of the uh, the gates here in the round of eight versus Dark and round of four in finals, depending on how far he advances. Yeah, there is a little bit of that meta game. Should you advance from this position as Solar where there aren't really a lot of Terrans, they're going to be practicing specifically for TBZ. As you said, so it is one of the boons of, you know, being one of these races that are a little bit underrepresented right now in the GSL. You know, a tournament that takes so much preparation for every individual match. And speaking of preparation, Tasteless Cure, taking a page out of Bion's book, actually, opening with two yeah. racks on the low ground. You know, Bion might have been right all along in Season 1. It just took a while for this to catch on. Well, this will happen where somebody has a weird build and people kind of scratch their heads or make jokes about it. And then, like, after a couple of games, people go, oh, wait a minute. This actually seems pretty good. And again, I like the idea. A couple features of this build for everybody is that, uh, one, you get a wall in, right? So uh, you get those Reapers out a little bit quicker than if they were in your main, but you can also keep your expansion defended. You're not going to be hit with counterattacks. If everything backfires, you have a wall and you can retreat behind. Uh, and you can tech however you want from here. Yeah, on top of that, these three Reapers in total, you can actually get some damage done with three Reapers. You can force more Lings out from your opponent, and that makes up for your later Command Center because now Zerg has to use their Larva to actually produce units that can deflect this attack, or they have to invest more into Queens and you know try to deal with the harassment that way. And actually, Kirk throwing down two more Barracks. I think we saw maybe this exact whoa, whoa, build whoa. from Bion, I think, in GSL last season, maybe on this map. If I'm not mistaken, I remember there being a map where Terran did this opening just like this and made a ton of Marines and just walked across the oh, map. Oh, no, that does sound familiar. I think it was Bion. I think it might have been this map. Now, look at this. This is normally forgivable to kind of trade out <laughs> uh, some lings to keep this from coming up there. But when you have a push coming up from behind like this, you're playing right into the hands uh, of Cure. Uh, now, there's a good spread of Overlords here to spot whatever leaves, and Marines without Stim are very, very slow units. Um, so, oh, I'm sorry, they're getting Stim. I don't know why I decided they wouldn't have that. But either way, even with Stim, you're not going to Stim until you get right to their base, right? You're not Stimming or running across the map. Um, yeah, I mean, this is a this is an interesting moment here. Uh, with all the damage that's been done so far, and killing a couple links is a pretty big deal when it comes to early attacks like this, how much oomph is going to be uh, with the next wave? Yeah, it's going to be a very big wave, too. Expect a very large ball of Marines to move out on the map. And the timing we're looking at right now is for Stimpak and Combat Shields to finish right before they basically reach the Zerg base. And here, he's not taking up whatsoever. No engineering base underway, no factory underway. Now, eventually, that will his economy will allow for that growth. But right now, it's all about setting up for the He's next push. He's going to go push. right out, right underneath. Oh, my God. All right, Bailing Nest underway here for Solar. He's just going to. I think that actually Kirk could win this. Yeah, absolutely. This is a very scary push. Yeah. And, and I, I, don't, don't, I don't like talking like that all the time. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, this is pretty wild. Oh, my God. Solar still doesn't understand the gravity of the situation. He's building more drones right now, four yeah. more drones in production. Here we go. All right, well, Kira's hand revealed here. He tries to go for the overlord. A little bit of a greedy play. Mm -hmm. I yeah. get it. I mean, you take out that, and you know, you don't, you don't know what's going on. But and also imagine supplying, blocking Zerg at this stage in the game too, right? Yeah, if you were able to do that's a that, good point. could be huge. By the way, the Banelings nest is in a pretty unfortunate spot. It's mm -hmm. going to be where the push is. Yeah, it's almost like you have like your most vital organs sticking out. 
Um, and you kill that and the game is done. All right, so Cure with no medevacs basically is going to have one stim in total that he can use here. And he was actually really hoping that Solar would have gone for the triangle third. Had Solar gone for the triangle third right now, I think that Patrick would basically be dead yeah. at this point for sure. Instead, Cure is going to have to roam all the way down across the architecture of the map to that left side to hit the third base. And this gives Solar a little bit more time to regroup himself, to get his bearings. And actually behind this, he's building more drones. So he feels like he's comfortable enough to deal with this. But I don't know, man. I'm looking at this on the map, and it's so many Marines that it's a scary proposition for me. But Solar just confident to keep droning on. Yeah, well, you can see Cure seems to believe that he can't commit yet. And, you know, eventually Baneling's speed is going to be done. Uh, the Zerg's going to have everything they need. That you, that the only way you could ever interact with the Zerg here would be to have medevacs on the map. We're about to get there. I think the starport add-on should be coming here shortly. Yeah, Medivac's just begun now, and a lot of Marines back at home as well for Cure. There's still no third command center underway, so he's just fully investing in military at this point as Solar. We'll see if he continues to advance his drone count beyond 57. So it feels like this is kind of the turning point of the game where Zerg really needs to start pumping the gas on their Ling and Baneling production if they want to survive. But a couple more drones. I mean, he's eking them out any chance he can get. He's very ambitious with his droning. Interesting to see this play uh, and also to see the patience exhibited here from Cure to not overextend. Yeah. But, you know, here we are. The push may finally uh, actually come in here. You know, two medevacs with an army of this size, not a lot, not gonna lie. Um, but you can get some stuff done with it. He gets the first tank over here and could finally set up a foothold to start this attack. Yeah, one tank in total, and so now the game plan here for Cure is to deny this fourth base. Plus one infantry weapons. Very close to completion. Is looking at the minimap, Solar is arcing to try and set up a surround on this position. No bailing speed just yet, only halfway done. And you can see he really wants to save this hatchery, Tasteless. Yeah, I think this hatchery is going to go down, though. I mean, the transfuses just keep coming in. If he can box out this bio and force him out on the low ground, and okay, Solar coming in on all sides. Decides not oh, to man. commit. I wonder if he could have actually got that. I mean, one tank? Uh, maybe yeah. not, maybe not. One tank and not that many medevacs, you know? I think he could have cleaned up the position, but then the problem you're running into is, is it a cost-effective enough trade? Because keep in mind, Cure, he's been on two orbitals for a long time during this. Failing speed just oh, now finishes, so the connection God. up top is massive. Cure not anticipating exactly that timing. Did not have a medevac ready to lift up those Marines. That was a huge hit. That was wild, man. I mean, can Cure kind of stretch this game out? It's Zergo about to be on five bases. The fifth base just finishes. Terran on two. There will be a third here soon. But I mean, a, a, a bungled attack here from Cure. And I think that Zerg could just seesaw all the way across the map and kill everything over there. Yeah, and the Ling's catching the reinforcements as well. Many Marines and also a tank. I mean, Kyrie, he is going to get the triangle third base right here. But as you said, Solar, he's still on four bases. He was up at five just a moment ago. And so for Solar, you know, losing that hatchery, you're not really losing that much efficiency in terms of mining. It's really just the production and the map control that's being dampened a little bit. And he can take that. I mean, he's powering really hard right now on these four bases. He only has one evolution chamber, but he already has plus one carapace matching the Terrans, plus one infantry weapons. Plus one melee attack and plus two carapace now underway here for Solar, so he will quickly catch up in upgrades. And he's confident enough to try and just stop Kyr from basically holding on to this position at all. Yeah, I mean, Kyr can't get much done here. Luckily, for Kyr's sake, he did actually get that hatchery, but I'm just worried that Solar is, like, too big to fail at this point in time. Yeah, it is starting to feel that way a little bit. The Solar's creep spread just continues to Push forward over here by this fourth base, and Kier now identifying that this is where the mining is happening. Has to know in the back of his mind that he didn't get as much damage done as he was hoping for when he killed the Triangle Third expansion. The Solar on 70 drones still mining very efficiently. Yeah, an unload over here at six o'clock, but I mean, the Zerg's already, it's kind of funny, it's like not exactly a convenient spot to have all your stuff behind minerals like this. And <laughs> And so you have to move kind of in an ant farm-like fashion, uh, pattern, excuse me, to kind of get out of there like that. Um, 
But yeah, I mean, Solar looks pretty comfortable at this point in time. And he's doing this without having a single muta in the game. It is just Queen, Ling, and Bane, right? So it's all about just kind of running to where you need to be and uh, basically denying the Terran any damage before things can really pick up. Yeah, Hydralisks are coming out for Solar now, though, so that will be the anti-air option for him. We've seen him pick off Medivacs in the series earlier against Ryong, and he would love to do the same thing here against Kira as... Really, Terran hasn't been able to get too much done besides delaying that fourth, which I guess now is the fifth base here for Solar. And you can see here at least he's trying to manage the creep spread here. It hasn't really been able to push past this one point. But besides that, it's just not really a lot of damage coming out of Terran. Instead, he's powering up back at home. He's going to try and take the fourth base of his own. And I feel like we might be setting up for more of a longer game here. I think so. I'm looking at you know, maybe one of these 20, 30 minute games here where it's going to be a real war of attrition. Um, you know, I, I think here did get something done, although probably not as much as he wanted here. Uh, I thought he might have had some more opportunities to try to cut, just to actually do a push out from underneath the Overlord. It's almost like he treated it like, okay, the Overlord can't see me, but now we're going to come out and show ourselves and then hit. There was a whole blind spot in that uh, moment early on. He could have gone all the way underneath and just hit the Zerg down there, and I think he didn't appreciate that. Or he didn't have a very good read uh, as to what the Zerg could see. And I mean, not that you can know, right? Overlords can be perched yeah. up anywhere. I think he also anticipated Solar would take the triangle third base instead of the one in the straight line down on the left side. Because, you know, had he taken this base on screen right now as his third expansion instead of the 9 o'clock position, then suddenly that Marine push looks a lot better. You have a beeline straight to the third base. You're probably going to take that expansion out. But instead, wasn't able to find that damage. Now Solar coming in, maybe a little bit of an overextension as perhaps he's trying to trade out some of these links. Actually gets a yeah, good number of tanks. But that, that was that was okay getting the tanks. But, you know, now these Hydras can be chased all the way down. They're so slow when they're not on creep, especially versus uh, stimmed infantry. Yeah, but only a couple of them going down. So all in all, not a bad trade here for Solar, although those Queens oh were on an adventure of their own. And this is a lot of bio tasteless. Cure right now, he is max, so. Solar, Solar in a bit of a predicament right here. Maybe he bled off too much Ling Bane. Yeah, he's gonna have an opportunity now to try to push in. Uh, it wasn't catastrophic what happened to Solar, but I mean, he did take a little bit of a beating back there, right? He did lose a few units here or there. There's a lot of siege tanks here as well. Yeah. We need to see maybe a little bit of a better spread here from Cure, but he might be able to get something done. Surprising is this many siege tanks too, considering how many just fell at third base. I mean, this was double-digit siege tank before that is. And look at the setup that Cure has right now against the full surround of Solar. Oh, but he bunches up all oh, his Marines no. in the middle. There was maybe a misclick there. Yeah. It seemed like he had the spread for a moment, but all you've got to do if you want to lose a fight like that is just to have everything clumped together. Yeah, the Marines in the middle not really providing the firepower that he needed. And you know, Cure, he still is going to survive in this position, but... Maybe not as favorable a trade as he could have gotten. Still taking down this hack tree. It is a nice pick. Solar, he has been kind of stymied a little bit in terms of expansions. He hasn't been able to move past that fifth base. And now Terran's matching it. Yeah, I mean, Terran... Okay, I think this is anybody's game at this point in time. It seemed like Cure was losing and losing. He had a moment to come back. Obviously, that last attack was pretty abysmal. Um, but yeah, here we are. Um, Zerg, as we get further and further in this game, we got to kind of point out the basics here. Zerg takes more bases than Terran early on and therefore can mine out on his side of the map quicker. Yeah, and as we quickly saw there in the resources lost craft, Solar quite far behind Kira in that regard. So he has taken a lot of resources on his side of the map to try and mitigate the damage that Kira could do to him. Kira has been very cost efficient, but as you said, he isn't mining as much. So in an extreme late game situation, you know, should this go split map, that is something that Solar is going to have to keep in the back of his mind that, you know, he has already depleted many more resources than his opponent. So things quieted down quite a bit. You know, uh, Zerg probably may be forced to kind of attack in a little bit quicker here. Well, hold on a sec. We have an interaction here at the very top of the map. Uh, and certainly this is going to cause a real threat here for this uh, close to 12 o'clock base. Yeah, it feels like Cure's game plan has kind of switched gears right now. And he yeah. just wants to try and deny any additional bases here for Solar, or at least delay them as best possible. I think that's what that hit squad there at the top was trying to do. That's yeah. certainly what this group of units is trying to do over here at the hatchery. But Solar with a nice spread 
Bailing's coming in. Big connections actually on those bio kills. One full medevac worth of units. And now Kurt pivoting to the main base. Yeah, just taking whatever he can find, really. Trying to do some damage with it. The moment it becomes undesirable to stay there, he picks up, he looks for another location. Yeah, but after all of that's said and done, you know, Solar, he is still able to secure that 12 o'clock position. He has that expansion set up now. He is going to be mining from a very shortly. Okay, never mind. It just yeah. ties immediately. For whatever reason, I thought there were more Zerg units there in a position to actually hold off on that drop is now Akira actually getting some good damage over here at the natural, oh. too. Might be able to get the Lurker den. And I almost, fact, yeah, I didn't even realize the Lurker den was there for a second. It was covered up by that medevac. That's actually pretty big. Um, and, you know, this is all happening while Kira's not really losing anything other than trading out the medevacs with the infantry, but that's pretty good. Yeah, these have been some good trades, and with the, the sensor tower spread that Kira has, plus him switching very heavily into ghosts here, it looks like it's going to be very hard for Solar to breach him. And, you know, a lot of times ZBT, at least earlier in the meta, as some units get caught here for Solar, or for Cure, excuse me, it, it used to be about Zerg really powering up and reaching max and getting a bank much like this and then just trying to break the Terran player. That's what Solar is going to try and do right now, attacking against this planetary fortress. You will be able to take on the first siege tank, but are there enough failings to actually contest the rest of this army? That planetary now at half HP, blinding cloud on the two siege tanks in the back, but neither of them falling. That command center did a great job of body blocking and really creating a choke point there for Cure. That was an extremely cost-efficient trade. And as I was saying, usually the game plan for Zerg, should they be able to play the game that they want to play, is to reach Max with a much more powerful army or powerful economy than the Terran player and just attack them relentlessly. Right. Deny them from getting the gases that they need up to secure all these ghost counts, get all these critical upgrades. But Cure has been able to navigate his way up to six bases in a very safe fashion, he has 10 siege tanks on his side of the map right now. He's getting plus three vehicle weapons. He's got planetaries and macro orbitals already set up. So coming down the line a little bit, he will be able to sacrifice some of these SCVs to make room for more army supply. And, you know, he's getting to be in a position where Soar might not be able to end the game anytime soon, even if he just keeps attacking into it because Kira is just so entrenched. Yeah, he's very entrenched, and I think he's playing the exact kind of game he needs to play here. So this actually puts a lot of pressure on Solar to try to figure out a way to get in this game and end it. We've got sensor towers in the north and the south to, you know, spot anything like an overseer that could uh, allow a nidus worm to get set up or, or anything like that. And so, you know, we're going to get to that point where we're going to get to that ultimate Turtle Terran style. Uh, and what Terran wants to do is basically Abuse 12 o'clock and 6 o'clock, those spawns there. The, the, on, I guess on the Zerg side of 12, if that makes sense. <laughs> uh, on the Zerg side of 6. Um, and, and just, you know, force the Zerg to reclaim that and fight unfavorably over and over. And Terran, at the same time, uh, as he's hitting those areas, he wants to slowly expand to his 12 o'clock and his 6 o'clock spot. Yeah, and he already has that command center finishing up over here, close to 12 o'clock position. And you see a scan drop down as, yeah. yeah, exactly as you said, playing it by the book. Solar is trying his best to you know, gather as many resources from these critical center points on the map as possible, but as of yet, not able to establish any of these bases. Even this one here at the 12 o'clock on Zerg side, I guess maybe, you know, 11 o'clock right there, 11.30 on the minimap. Very few minerals being mined overall as Solar once again going to attack over here into the third base of Cure. But there's enough siege tanks to deflect this easily, so. Solar just eating into his mineral bank a little bit there, remaxing on more lanes. But you have to keep in mind the cost efficiency here for Terran is supreme. Yeah, and, and, and you know some of these fights that look like well, you know both sides lost stuff. In the long run, a lot of times it starts to add up for Zerg here. And every time you see the retreat, you can watch this, the Terran hunts down and just gets a couple of those kills. Ooh, Nidus. Okay. And Nidus network in production, so Solar's trying to make something happen here, trying to find some kind of breach they can make in the Terran side of the map is here now starting to entrench himself over here at the 12 o'clock. He has that orbital or command center, I should say, floated in. That's going to be a planet here very soon, and Solar does not want to allow this to happen. Attacking off creep here into all these siege tanks. They are bunched up a bit, but not a lot of blinding clouds. Yeah, I mean, Zerg is going to wipe this position pretty uh, damn well. And by the way, Zerg's actually growing into the sensor tower at 6 o'clock on the mm. Terran side of the map. So, I mean, really, Zerg's just trying to really force things. Despite not having the blinding clouds there on the siege tank, Solar just had enough lings that he was actually able to breach that position as 
you know, one of the problems here for Terran is you do have to spread yourself kind of thin with your tank line across the entire arc of the map to defend all these bases. But, you know, Kyrie, he's got Insurance Command Center, so he's going to lift another one up, send it back up here to the 12 o'clock position. He knows it was very expensive for Solar to try to attract it, try to attack into there before. It's going to make him have to do it again. Well, um, this is an interesting approach because six o'clock, both sixes are, are Zergs now. Uh, Zergs gonna hit again over here for Cure, and we're gonna kind of see a roll reversal here, where Zergs just gonna try to push through uh, and really smash these spots. We've got, oh man, we have Hellbats being added in here to try to deal with some of these Banes, anything that's gonna give you that sustain, give you a little bit more HP. Oh my God, the broad Banes! Yeah, there's an Infester here as well. Let's see if we can find some damage. Seems like Kira is unaware as this lucky yeah. scan catching the retreating army is able to spot out the Infester. And he had those five or six Burrowed Banes. You have the potential to get a big hit off. Should Kira retreat back to that position, but it seems like he will finally be able to actually establish himself on the Terran side of 12 o'clock. A critical base for Terran because, you know, with the cost efficiency that he has, you know, to this point, it's a very safe game for him. Should he be able to stabilize with this expansion? Because at the end of the day, should all these bases mine out, Terran eventually will have more in the bank. Yeah. Um, this has really been the point of tension here is at the, at the top. But look, Zerg is mining from the Terran's base in the bottom. I feel like we haven't really gone there and looked at this, but I got to keep pointing this out because this is a huge role here in how this game may end, ultimately. And another great attack in here from Solar. So many tanks go down. Um, it looked like he might have been able to stay a little bit longer, but I guess with that many ghosts and that many tanks, he decides otherwise. He pulls back. This allows the ghosts to come in here with some great snipes. The Banelings come in, uh, do take out a couple ghosts. Yeah, getting three ghosts there is a nice pick for Solar, but right now I'm really starting to feel fear for him because you know, while these attacks into the 12 o'clock position have been mostly effective, the last couple unable to breach Terran from that planetary fortress and also really just very expensive here for Zerg as Solar with this attack now is dipping to 133 supply and although he's on 80 drones he's not able to replenish his army fast enough and so yes he is making some plays on Cure that's side it. of the map but that's just going to be it GG is called as Solar at 130 supply really not able to withstand the storm that is Cure he couldn't be cost efficient enough to break that 12 o'clock position and kind of painted himself into a corner yeah I mean it seems like in the last couple minutes there solar really realized oh man I got to do something or I'm just gonna be in a position that will never win here uh, in the end game uh, and so right now cure up 1-0 kind He's, of a weird start to a yeah. pretty epic ending there yeah, that was an interesting game considering we began that with a four barracks opening from Kieran a very late third command center and if he's able to macro out of that not able to find too much damage but macro out of that and play a game that well to yeah. what the 25 minute mark i mean kira is just on another level right now i feel like you know, whether he had a broken arm or not <laughs> i mean he's just playing out of his mind whatever he's doing is right somebody go break his other arm this guy's <laughs> onto it man i like it uh you know really impressive stuff in all seriousness um up next royal blood Cure versus Solar. Cure wins this, he's out. That leaves only one spot left in the round of eight. If Solar wins this, we've got ourselves a series. And, uh, oh, we have a small delay. No, we're going to start the game now, excuse me. Um, All right. So, yeah, I really want to see what openings these guys are going to do. Just Cure with a very different approach in that game. 2023 GSL Season 2. Club NV, Cure. Onside Gaming, Solar. The way Kira was able to nav able to navigate that match from that four barracks opening all the way to split map TBZ, Ghost Tank against Solar, one of the best Zergs in Korea, in the world, really, just goes to show what good form he's in.
right now. I mean, the first series against Australia was very impressive, but then to come and play a game like that, so we have some Cure fans here in attendance as well. It's just unbelievable. Is that Solar? Solar, get back up there and play the game. <laughs> Put your shirt on and get back up there and win. He's got his shirt off. <laughs> I, I'm feeling really good about Cure's chances, not only of getting out of this group. I mean, obviously, one map went away now against Solar here in the winner's match of advancing, but doing really well in the round of eight. I mean, I could easily see him, if he maintains this form, you know, plowing through top eight into top four yet again, and possibly looking for a CODES title here. I mean, Cure has been such a, 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 a continuously improving player here. All of his games have been so exciting this year. Um, and he had such a great run uh, earlier on here this year. I um, I don't expect he will have anything like that last game, any kind of weird timing. That's what the f game one what really was, right? He opened with Beyond's build, and then he hides two more barracks. And what's weird is he got in the position where it seemed like he could just kind of move underneath the Zerg's detection and win, and he just sort of went right in, in the most obvious direction and tried to take it. Kind of an odd game, but anyways... Late game was epic. Yeah, I think it really was just him trying to kill Solar had Solar taken the other third base because with the architecture of that map, it's a very straight line from basically your expansion to their expansion there at that third. And if those Marines walk in on expansion, I'm almost certain it's going down. If you think back to what Solar really had at that stage in the game, it wasn't much. It was mostly Queens, some Lings. I think maybe the Bailing's Nest, yeah, it was done there at the natural expansion, but in a very precarious position. I feel like Solar would have had to forfeit that third hatchery to survive in that game, but instead he took the expansion at the nine o'clock position and Cure, without missing a beat, he doesn't overextend, he doesn't take the bad fight, he doesn't right. push on a creep and risk throwing away the game. He just slows it down a little bit, expands back at home and just shifts gears into something more macro focused, more focused on whittling down the Zerg with map control, with drops by delaying expansions with small groups of units, and eventually he's able to find himself into a position where he has half of the map against the Zerg that is completely running out of steam trying to break him. It's a very interesting game, number one. I would love to go back and watch that replay, really, and see how yeah. Kier played it, because I think we were both taken aback a little bit at how that opening went. And I felt like Kier was so far behind, but I guess he never really made any misplays. It seemed like it. Well, there was one, I guess, when it looked like he was actually ahead again, where his, his whole infantry stuff group, group, uh, grouped up. Oh, yeah, that fight. It seemed like there was this point where he had everything spread out, and then, like, right when the attack happened, everything, he must have misclicked. Everything just came together. Kira is going mech, by the way. Oh, wow. <laughs> two more factories getting thrown out, and I was not anticipating this. In game number two here, I saw the third command center and the one barracks, and I was like, huh, very greedy, but... Yeah, three factories coming out from Cure. I actually don't know when the last time I saw Cure play a mech TBZ is. You know, maybe I'm just blanking on the memory. No, but I, I feel like he never goes mech. You know, we have a lot of Terrans that do like to do it, like Gumiho. We've seen Special do it several times. We've even seen Maro do it, I feel like, more than Cure goes mech. But yeah, I think he's, I, I mean, I'm sure somewhere in history he's gone mech of in course. a couple games. But um, it, definitely it's not, you know, the default thing he tends to go for. Him and Bunny especially tend to be more bio-oriented uh, players. Yeah, and it's going to be battle mech as well. Cyclones in production as well as their upgrade. This is very cool to see. Now, how far in... Oh! oh. <laughs> I was about to say how far... I was going to say how many factories could he see, and then I'm one like, tile. oh, he's not going to see any one other than tile. the one that's right there. And when you see one factory, you don't go, hmm, he's going to go mech. You go, okay, he's everything looks normal, right? So, what Solar needed to see, it's not about stopping it, it's about, you know, being ready. And again, look at that, he has the right number of Hellions in the front and he keeps the rest in the back. Three is not a suspicious number. Yeah, Solar just thinks he's playing a Hellion heavy opening here. I mean, he might have a suspicion that it could be met considering how many Hellions are on the field, but up to this point, no certainty at all as finally the Cyclone joining forces will reveal the hand that, yes, this is Battle Mech coming out from Cure. And let's see what he's able to get done. Actually, these Queens bunching up a little bit with no support. One of them does get taken out here by the Cyclones and the Hellions. Nice control there, only losing one Hellion so far with all these Lings going down. Nine Roaches now in production for Solar, looking to stabilize, but the Queens very low on energy, Tasteless. Yeah. Um, 
the, the, he's starting to try to win this tug of war over here in the middle of the map. He drops one queen. The chain transfuses come out, but after that, the Zerg is going to be running on empty. Uh, we've got the, um, the upgrades finishing up here, which means the damage is going to start to compound. Yeah, Solar maybe has energy for one more transfuse across these queens right now, as this is a very dangerous position for him. A lot of the Hellions are getting shaved away, but the Cyclones with the continuous damage just shredding these roaches and really cure. He's just trying to get any damage that he can done right now. I mean, the snowball effect is real here for Battle Mech. I mean, Solar, every single roach that he pops out is just replacing one that's died. He's not actually gaining any speed. Yeah, and he's going to continue to try to come in and slowly whittle away at uh, this. We've got the barracks over here to spot and even to draw out some queen fire. That it can be very frustrating to micro against because some of the queens in the back will then default onto attacking that. Uh, and Cure, like a hot knife cutting through butter here, is slowly beginning to open the Zerg up. A couple more roaches are going to come out and try to save the day. But again, I mean, the range that these Cyclones get, wow. it could be so abusive to the Zerg. Yeah, Roach Speed is about to finish, but there's not many Roaches left on the field. I mean, these Queens haven't been injected. They've been fighting this entire time, so Larva has to be scarce right now for Solar, and he's lost so many units on the ground as well. I mean, the Hellions have been whittled away, but the Cyclone Ball remains. And with the Roaches just trickling in, only four of them on the map right now. This is such a dangerous position. Cure might be able to break him. I think Cure is almost done. And keep in mind the Roach Warren as well here is going to be something that's going to collaterally be damaged throughout this fight. Uh, the further he pushes in, if he takes that out, you can't make anything to soak up these shots. Oh, and now the cream spread is starting to thin between the natural expansion and this third base, which means these queens, they're not as mobile. The Cyclones can get more picks. And now Solar trying to come in with the speed, is able to snipe sli down two of those Cyclones. Very good kills for him, but is it enough? I don't think so. Yeah, a lot of those roaches are very low. In fact, he just pursues that all the way down, uh, taking overlords and anything out, uh, else out that he can get. Another roach falls here. Uh, and you can see now the divide here. The creep cannot reach. It's not connected, which gives his safe location. And now the pressure really bids, builds, because the roach warn, it's going to go down. And then you're not going to have the, the means to fight this, right? Cyclones and Hellions are going to continue to filter down here. You can see unusual angles being taken here by Solar to try to take the fight, but it does seem like Kurt just has this. It does seem that way, Tasteless. Five more Cyclones right now in production as it is not going to stop now. Solar being dwarfed in supply. The Roach Count dwindling. Only four Queens on the board. I feel like Kurt has done it. What a cool build. Yeah, I mean, Kurt really showing quite the range. We talked about this before in the series, you know. You, have, you can really just bring out your very best builds versus Zerg because this is not a Zerg heavy tournament, right? Mm -hmm. Just do what works and then go to the next phase. I think with this next set of Hellions and Cyclones, there's just nothing left uh, that Zerg can do. Yeah, at this point, there's more Cyclones than Roaches on the map. 14 in total as Solar is slowly getting grinded down by the knife that is Cure. And with very few units left on the map. I mean, 20 roaches are in production, so there is a chance here for him, but the supplies really tell the tale. Cure, he's expanded to a third base behind this. He's pumping out of five factories right now, and the sustained damage from these Cyclones has been so huge, so monumental. I would love to, look at the units lost tap. Minus 8,000 res for Solar compared to Cure, wow. as Cure with a game two victory is going to be the first player to advance from Group D. Dude, that's like a build. I want to like queue up a game and do that build right now. It looks so fun. Uh, and I'll tell you what, man, not a guy you think Cyclones uh, with. You don't think Battle Mac, right? So like, this has just been a very, very fun uh, evening. Cure really showing a range and showing an expertise and whatever uh, kind of strategy he picks coming into this. We're going to go to an interview now here. Uh, with Kira, see how he's feeling. He has got that second to last place in the round of eight here in the GSL. Uh, massive congratulations on advancing to round of eight, Kior. How are you feeling right now? Well, you know, my group consists of players uh, who are really good at um, playing against Terrence, but surprisingly, today was an easy day. 
Well, you showed great ability today, and then you also um, used some surprising tactics to catch your opponents off guard. And now you're going to have to um, relieve your last season's um, underperformance and try to reach for a higher goal this season. Well, I do feel like my TVT um, lacks a bit compared to my other matchups, so I really uh, practice that. And I'll try to overcome my um, performance and try to show great results. And right now, the trend is that the Terran players are advancing to the higher rounds. So what do you think about that trend? Well, honestly, I think Terran is not in a good position right now. But looking at the results, it feels like they are. Uh, Terran is good, objectively speaking. Uh, but I feel like Terran players, they, ha um, they make good preparation for their matches. But I don't admit that Terrans are OP. So what you're saying is that the Zergs and the uh, Portal players are putting in less effort. That's what you're saying, right? No, not really. I mean, like, of the Zerg, pro Zerg players, Portal players, they try hard. But Terran players, they're exceptionally um, try harders. Oh, yeah, you're currently going through um, rehab, right? Oh, that's right. I'm going through rehab uh, for my arm. And I'm trying to um, practice less since I need to uh, make room for re rehab. Well, we look forward to great results from you um, in the next match. And there are so many fans rooting for you, of course, so anything you want to say to them. Well, last season, you know, I was the runner-up. I'll try to um, better my TBT performance and try to make it to um, further rounds. Well, once again, congratulations, Cure. Thank you. Excellent work, Andy. Uh, thank you for the translation. Look, Kier definitely deserved to get out of this group. We thought he might be the strongest, but uh, he is clearly like, way better than everybody else. Yeah, he absolutely proved it. I mean, second place in last GSL was not a fluke from this guy. He is looking so strong right now. Easily one of the best Terran players in the world. Yeah, easily, man. Um, so he moves on. Uh, is, he will continue to be a threat in this tournament. That leaves only three players left here in the round of 16. We're going to eliminate one of these players now. Uh, it's going to be Ryung versus Estrella. That'll come after the short break. And then the winner of that will go up against Solar uh, in our final match here. Yeah, last chance for Protoss and Zerg players to get one more guy in. The top eight right now looking very Terran heavy. Yep, yeah, it's going to be another one of those tournaments. We'll see how the final four ends up here. Uh, but for now, man, Terrans are really on top of it. Short break, guys. We will be right back.